Should you seal the inside of your guitar? And if you do seal it, uh, what kind of sealer should you use? How should you apply it? How does that affect the sound of the guitar? And how does it affect the long-term stability of the instrument and why? If you've been wondering about any of these questions, keep watching. We're gonna talk about all of them in this video. If you've been searching around online, you might have discovered that there are a lot of different opinions about whether or not you should seal the inside of the guitar body and what finish you should use, what's, what's, which one is gonna be best. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that we as luthiers, we each find different things that work best for us. And that's totally fine. So in this video, I'll be explaining what works for me, how I approach it, why I make all the choices I do. I think it's gonna be really helpful for you and I'm hoping that you'll come away with some great tips and some good information. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna share with you a clip from what we call the Luthier's Edge Q&A Jam Session. Now, if you're not familiar with the Luthier's Edge yet, it's my online guitar making school. And one of the great things we do there is we do a monthly live streaming, uh, I guess you could call it like a webinar, uh, here for my workshop where my students ask questions. I help them solve issues and deal with problems, fix mistakes, and um, make big decisions that they're, they're worried about and things like that. And we have a great time. It's, it's really a lot of fun. And recently, the question about sealing the inside of the guitar came up. And I just thought it was a good question. There's a lot of great concepts involved that spill over into other areas of guitar making. And um, I just thought it would be a cool thing to share with you guys. In case any of you aren't familiar with the Luthier's Edge, I will put some information below so you can check it out if you want to. And um, with all that being said, let's head over and check out this clip and learn some more about sealing the inside of the guitar body. Uh, so Sal was asking, um, do you ever put any kind of finish or sealer on any of the parts inside the guitar? This is a great question. Um, so there are, I was thinking about it, so I think, we'll see if I come up with more, but I think there's three reasons why um, this, that's a really important question to think about. Number one is humidity. So there's a rule in woodworking, just a general rule, which is whatever you do to one side of a board, you gotta do to the other side of the board. Like a gnat or something here. Uh, sorry, just like dive bombing me. Um, the, so yeah, whatever you do to one side of the board, you do to the other side of the board. And the reason for that, I mean, there's probably several, but one main reason for that is humidity. So if I take one board, one, a board, let's say the guitar top, let's say there's a, just a guitar top like this. Okay, let's say it's just like this. There's no bracing on it or anything. I put a bunch of shellac or finish or whatever, lacquer on this side. I leave this side bare. When, when the humidity out here changes in the atmosphere, the part with the sealer on it is not gonna, well, it will absorb moisture, but just very much slower because moisture goes right through finishes, which we know, right? Because we use a steam, like uh, a thing we've talked about in past sessions is if there's a dent in your French polish, you can actually steam the dent out right through the finish because the, the moisture does go through the finish, any finish, but at a much slower rate. And so this one though, if, it, if I walk into like a, you know, a sauna or something, this side with no finish is gonna absorb a whole bunch of moisture really fast. And so it's gonna expand. And so what you're gonna get is you're gonna get the top, you know, bending this way, it's gonna get warped like that because there's an uneven absorption and loss of moisture because one side is finished and one side isn't. So that's one reason why we do, why I always wanna seal um, the inside of the guitar. Okay, so there's humidity part and it's, when it comes to arch tops, it's really, really important because the arch top expresses humidity gains or losses by the top of the guitar either rising or lowering in, in a surprisingly drastic amount, which is why most bridges have those thumb wheels because it's just so much of a change. A hot day here in St. Louis in the summertime, if somebody's guitar was used to being in, you know, some cooler temperatures or at least drier humidity, and suddenly the guy gets it out of the case at a gig and he's ready to play, and the humidity is 20% higher in this new place, 
his action could go, I mean, that bridge could rise up an eighth of an inch or more. And his strings are going to be a thousand miles off that thing, off that fingerboard, you know? So when I seal the inside, I'm going to slow down and even out that reaction. And that's going to protect against like shock to the wood over time. And it's just going to, it's just going to help in a lot of different ways. So humidity, that's, that's reason number one. Um, reason number two is an interesting one and that's sound. So the way that you treat that in that space inside the guitar is like treating a room that you're in. When I was in college, I, I got a double major. One was in jazz guitar, the other was audio technology. And I had the awesome experience of studying with a guy named Bill Porter, who was the sound engineer, famous sound engineer who did all Elvis's recordings and uh, Roy Orbison and all the famous guys of that era. And what was cool is he was good at, that was before all the fancy tech that we have now. And he just knew how to listen to a room. And I think that was one of the things that got me dialed in on my hearing and perception and like understanding what I was perceiving um, in a different way, a more clear way. When I start, started making guitars, I, I heard about the humidity issue. And so I started using um, albumin, which is egg whites and sealing the inside of my guitars with the egg whites. And the interesting thing about egg whites is it does seal it, but it keeps the surface on the inside kind of rough. It doesn't smooth the surface. And so here's what's interesting about albumin. So you use albumin if you don't want to create a reflective surface inside the guitar. And there's sometimes you want to keep that dry, woody sound inside the guitar. It's less echo echoey, for lack of a better word. And it's more of this dry, rough, woody kind of voice, which is pretty cool in, in some cases. And then in other cases, you might want to use shellac or something that's going to be a shinier surface, and it's going to really kick up the high frequency action inside the guitar. It's like painting a room with gloss paint, you know, or painting a room or doing a room like with a rough wall like this. The sound, you might be able to imagine the sound. Maybe you've experienced that in your house or something before. And so we're also controlling that. So we're looking at humidity and then we're deciding, do we want to make a reflective room inside that guitar? Do we want to make a non-reflective room in there? And it's really fun to be able to control that. Now for me, I just like to put shellac in there. I like the balance of the fact that I'm putting shellac on the outside and shellac on the inside. And um, the, the only real subtlety that I do is on arch tops that are made out of maple, I do a heavier coat of shellac because I'm, because the maple already is less active in the higher frequencies. And when I put the shinier shellac on the inside, it's going to bump up that a little bit and it just gives it a little more sparkle. It gives it a little more resonance and it, it kind of comes through too. It's not just, doesn't just stay inside the guitar. It changes the voice a little bit. So, uh, and it helps the bass a little bit too, to be a little more focused. I think that's just my perception, but, um, or my feeling or whatever opinion, <laughs> I guess, um, because those things are so hard to like put your finger on, but, for rosewood guitars, like Cocobolo or something that's got crazy high frequency action um, going on sonically in, uh, in like a classical or a steel string, more so on a steel string, <clears throat> I'll still use the shellac, but I'll do less and I'll do a lighter coat. So in that case, I'm trying to keep the wood more to like the albumin kind of rougher wood thing. I'm not trying to like add more to already busy, busy trebles and already reflective environment you know, but I want to seal it. So, um, and then the third thing is the shellac just looks awesome, especially on an arch top. I love to look through the sound hole and see that maple just blazing out of there, you know, on the inside to me, I just love that. It looks really cool. So, uh, yeah, so I think that was a really good question. Um, and it's another one of those fun details that, are, that we can get creative with, even though it seems like it might be something mundane. Well, I hope you found that useful, maybe picked up a few tips and tricks, uh, possibly even deepened your understanding of some of the factors at play in keeping your guitar stable and 
uh, fine-tuning that sort of reflective or non-reflective space inside of the guitar body. And uh, if you like this video, hope you'll give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the Art of Blue 3 channel if you haven't yet. You can also head over to theartofblue3.com for a whole bunch of articles and tips and uh, videos and guides and all kinds of great resources for guitar making. And of course, if you want to check out the Luthier's Edge online guitar making school, you can find that information there as well. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.